So we're live. So hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today at this uh, Your Overseas Home webinar. So my name is Ryan, and I'm the marketing manager here at Your Overseas Home. Today, we'll be chatting to Malcolm, a private wealth manager at Chase Buchanan, um, about your financial considerations um, when you when you should think about moving to Greece. It's, uh, it's lovely to have you, um, so many of you here today with us, whether you're watching live on demand. Before um, we start the presentation and get stuff um, kicked off, uh, Malcolm, can you please just um, introduce yourself and um, what Chase Buchanan um, does? Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Malcolm McDowell. I'm the private wealth manager here at Chase Buchanan. Um, I deal almost entirely with uh, people who are either expats or about to become expats. So um, I was 18 years overseas. I'm actually speaking to you now from the UK. So I came back to the UK just over three and a half years ago, just before COVID. And um, uh, but the vast majority of my clients are are, are people who have uh, who are based overseas. Uh, and when I say overseas, I mean mainly within the EEA, the European Economic Area. Okay, um, I am a MIFID regulated advisor. So although you'll see us on the on the FCA uh, register, um, when I give advice to someone, it's usually under that that license. Um, so you'll you'll see me under that license online as well. Um, I've lived in seven different countries now uh, and come back finally to the UK. Some of them I've done two stints in. So everything that I'm going to talk about today is stuff that I've been through myself. So, um, you know, any kind of questions that you've got, um, I'll try and cover as much as I can um, with regard to, to Greek tax today. Uh, anything that's a little bit more in depth, you know, please get in touch with me afterwards or just ping over some questions and we'll do our very best to uh, answer them all at the end of the call. So uh, awesome. that's me. Yeah, nice. So thank you for that, Malcolm. So yeah, so once Malcolm has gone over his presentation, we'll um, open the floor up to questions. If you have any questions, um, as we go along, please type them into the tab on the right hand side of your screen. Um, we hope to answer as many queries as we can today. But if we don't get around to answering them all, um, please don't worry, we can um, get the unanswered questions um, forward to Malcolm and his team at Chase Buchanan after and they'll be sure to get back up um, back to you. So yeah, let's get cracking with the presentation and I'll hand it over to Malcolm and then he can, um, yeah, he can go through the presentation. Lovely. Okay, let's get started. So this first page we've already done. So skip on to the important stuff. Okay, so Greek tax. There are three things really in terms of income tax in Greece. Um, I'll go through each one of them and then I'll give an example because if you, you know, once we've gone all three, you might think, well, that's a bit confusing and complicated. It's not. So that's why we'll go through a we'll go through a, an example afterwards so I can explain exactly how how that works. So the first one is here, the sliding scale for income tax in Greece. Okay. So the first thing to notice is that the um, there is no nil rate band. So anything up to ten thousand euros, you'll be paying nine percent tax on. Okay. Um, unlike in France and unlike in the UK. There is no actual nil rate band. So anything between 10,000 and 20,000 is 22% tax. Anything between 20 and 30 is 28. 30 and 40 is 36. And anything upwards of 40 is at 44%. Okay. So let's just click on to the next one. Okay. So in Greece, uh, they tax um, money from rentals differently than they do income tax. Most countries, it's just thrown in there with income tax. Uh, it's not in Greece. So let's cover that. So you've got up to 12,000. Again, no no nil rate band here. So um, is that, that's tax at 15%. Anything between 12,000 and 35,000 is at 35%. And anything upwards of 35,000 is at 45%. Okay. So we have just had a question, I think, uh, from Maria just come through on the percentage of that. Yeah. So she's asked the uh, the 7% incentive, does that in benefit US expats at all since we have to pay the US tax as well? 
Um, yeah, that's one of the problems of being a, 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 a U.S. So the double tax agreement between the U.S. and um, and Greece, um, I would need to check that and get back to you. Yeah, it's um, my guess is that you would have to pay the tax in in, uh, in 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 the U.S. and then the additional seven seven percent in Greece. But I would need to check that and get back to you. That's all down to the small print of the DTA between Greece and um, and the U.S. And uh, there are a lot of DTAs, so I can't know them all. <laughs> okay, cool. So we'll have to get back to you on that one. Yeah. Okay, so um, moving on. This is the third one. So this is um, solidarity contribution that applies to total income. So your uh, in, um, any income that's coming from your work and any income that's coming from rentals. Okay, so that's um, 12%, sorry, 0% on anything up to 12,000, so a nil rate band of coming up to 12,000, and then 2.2 on everything from 12 to 20, five on everything from 20 to 30, 6.5 on everything from 30 to 40, 7.5 on everything from 40 to 65, 9% on everything from 65 to 220, and everything above that at 10%. Okay, so you're probably totally confused by now, so let's do an example. Okay, you're a Greek taxpayer. You have earned 40,000 in one year, in one tax year. Tax year in Greece is uh, 1st of January to the 31st of December. 25,000 of that is income from work. 15,000 of that is income from renting an apartment. Let's break it down and see how that works. So for your employment income, your 25,000 will fall into three bands. So what we mentioned before, so anything up to 10,000 will be at 9%. Anything between 10 and 20 will be at 22 and anything uh, above, the, above that will be sitting at 28. So that makes for 4,500 in tax because you fall into those three bandings, okay? Rental income, okay, you've got 15,000 in rental income of the 40. So you will pay the first banding, 15% on the first 12, and 35% on the remaining 3,000. That comes to 2,850. Then you have the solidarity contribution, which works on both of them, so on the full 40,000. So you will pay 6.5% um, on 40,000 or 2,600. If you add those all together, so the 4,500, the 2,850, and the 2,600, that comes to 9,950. So basically, 25% uh, of your 40,000. Okay? So nice and straightforward. We can, uh, I can go through that again uh, afterwards if you like. Okay. Property taxes. Okay, some of you will probably know about this, as you some of them, some of you already have property in, in, in Greece. So let's cover that. When you purchase a house in Greece, there's a real estate transfer tax of just over 3%. Okay, everyone knows about that. And then we have um, ongoing taxes on property in, in Greece. Uh, there's two of them. It's the municipal tax and the uniform tax. Okay, um, best way to think of this, the way I look at it is... Um, basically the, the the Greek equivalent to uh, to uh, um, council tax in the UK all right so it's split into two parts um, one is the municipal tax which is the 0 0.025 to 0 0.035 percent of the real estate's value depending on the location and age uh, and then you've got the uniform tax which depends on a lot of things okay not only on the side on the location surface use zone price age and all sorts of stuff. So all very bespoke and is calculated individually. Okay. So that's something you really need to speak to an estate agent about when you're going to buy the house. But people who bought purchased the house will uh will already know about that. Okay, other taxes. Okay, so these are um quite favorable compared to some of the other European countries. So capital gains tax at 15%. Uh, that's quite low compared to some of the others. Um, withholding tax on interest at 15% and um, 
withholding tax on dividends at 5%, withholding tax on royalties at 20%, and royalties paid to Greece resident corporations are exempt from this taxation. Okay, if uh, so, any of that worries you, talk to me. There are ways that we can mitigate this. Okay, just get back in touch with me. Uh, my details will be on the last slide. I'll go through that in a minute. Okay. All right, pensions in Greece, massive topic. Okay, let's cover this. So UK pensions in Greece. Um, as the lady um, mentioned a little bit earlier, um, there is a new alternative taxation regime at 7%, which is flat, and can be applied for a maximum of seven years. Okay, that's all very nice, but there's a couple of other things you need to take into account. This is very important. You need to split pensions basically into two realms. One is the pensions that are already in drawdown, okay, and ones which are not in drawdown, okay? So ones where you're taking money out already and ones where you haven't taken any money out yet. Let's deal with the first lot first. So let's say you're already taking some money out from a number of different pensions in, in, uh, in the UK and you're about to move to Greece. Fine, not a problem. All you do is to tell the French, sorry, the, the Greece tax authorities that this is what you are about to be uh, drawing down in uh, in uh, in Greece. Um, and what they'll do is they'll give you some paperwork to fill in. They then stamp it. They then send that to HMRC. HMRC then stamp that, and then that goes to your pension providers. Pension providers will then send the money to you, and Greek tax will come from it. Okay. Nice and simple. If that's for pensions which are already in drawdown. For pensions which are not already in drawdown, excluding state pensions, anything else, so any kind of private pensions you've got, any defined contribution, defined benefit, doesn't matter, then you need to speak to me. Because really what you should be doing once you go to Greece is putting them in a much more efficient, tax efficient uh, platform. Okay, an overseas pension. Well, that could be staying in the UK as well. It just depends on your circumstances. Okay, and I'll give you a little bit of background on this as well. It's kind of important. So back in 2004, we have what's called the European Tax Directive. So that was a number of, uh, uh, a lot of exciting legislation to do with the freedom of movement of people and the freedom of movement of capital within the European Union. Okay, so... All the, all the European Union were trying to do was try and, with regard to that, was to try and to, with regard to pensions, was to try and pull them into the 21st century. Yeah, um, They realised that people were not working for one company for 40 years anymore and then collecting the defined benefit pension. They were doing five years here, two years here, 10 years here, and often in different countries. So all the EU were trying to do was make it more fair for these people. So if you're in Portugal and you've got a Spanish pension, why are you still paying Spanish tax? Why is your pension still there? It's your money. It doesn't belong to the pension scheme. You should be able to take it with you. Yeah. So that's all they were really trying to do. And back then, of course, we were members of the European Union. So in 2006, what we did, it was a it was a um, pressure from the uh, uh, European Union in 2004. And in 2006, we made it legislation. Everything I'm about to talk about, you'll see sitting on the HMRC website. OK, and that came on board on the 6th of April 2006. It's often referred to in the UK as Pensions A Day. Now, don't ask me why, but they call it Pensions A Day. From that day onwards, anyone with a UK pension, doesn't matter what colour their passport, had the right to take their pension with them into the EEA, European Economic Area. OK, so, um, of course, what HMRC never really realized and never foresaw was that this would mushroom into a massive pensions transfer industry. Okay, first of all, you just had a few million leaving the UK after 2006 and in 2007, more of a trickle. And then in 2008, 2009, um, it turned into an avalanche to the point where there was billions leaving the UK and being transferred either outside the UK or within the UK. So the pension transfer has just exploded. And the pensions that moved outside the UK were the ones that HMRC liked the least. 
The reason for that being is it's money that they can't tax directly. Okay, so um, they continued to do as many kind of restrictions on that as they could over the years. I don't want to go into the details, um, but uh, overseas pensions are still here. They still exist. Um, I thought actually uh, or April of, of this year that Mr. Jeremy Hunt would knock it on their head. Uh, he didn't. It seemed like he had some other things on his mind um, and his plate was full with other things, I think. So um, he hasn't. So we still have the opportunity to do this. OK, so um, if you have a pension that's not in drawdown yet, then I strongly suggest that you um, get in touch with me. Yeah, um, And that can be a defined benefit defined contribution doesn't matter um everything that i've spoken about is on the hmrc website they don't advertise it as you can imagine you know you can't expect a, a turkey to vote for christmas but um it is all there and it's still uh, available to do it's become harder and harder to do these transfers but that's more more my problem than it is yours get in touch it's uh, I'll find out what your situation is with, your, with regard to your pensions and we'll see what your options are. And that could be moving it within the UK, not necessarily moving it out. It just depends on what, what it is you've got and what you're trying to do. Okay. And that's about as much detail I want to go into with pensions. Otherwise, we'll get very, very bogged down. <laughs> okay, good. Right. High net worths. Okay, so they have something in place here in, uh, uh, in, in Greece, which is kind of interesting for, for you chaps with lots and lots of money um you can uh pay a basically a lump sum of a hundred thousand euros a year regardless of your income and regardless of your assets okay however that only lasts up to 15 years if you come into that category talk to me okay there are ways we can even get this mitigated as well um but yeah get in touch that's very bespoke as you can imagine Inheritance tax, right? Let's get on top of this very quickly. Um, as I look, I can see we're running out of time and I've been talking too much. Um, double tax agreement between Greece and the UK does not cover inheritance tax. Okay, there's only five countries in the EU where the I where the um DTA covers inheritance tax. What that means for you is that um, you move over to Greece, you think your trials and tribulations with HMRC are finished, you are wrong. They will be interested in if you still have your UK domicile, which is very likely that you will, because UK domicile is very hard to kick. Domicile and tax residency are two very separate things. OK, basically, as long as you still got your UK passport, they will be coming after you. So you go to Greece, uh, you then pop your clogs. Um, the uh, HMRC will be interested in everything uh, in 40 percent on tax on everything above your nil rate band. So yeah, if that's your situation, talk to me, we can set up trust, uh, trust structures, which can mitigate all of that, if not some of it. Um, so, so we, we can, you know, get that done. So, you know, get in touch, 40% uh, is a lot to pay. And uh, in reality, when it comes to inheritance tax, it's very much a voluntary tax. Yeah, it really is. You just can't do it on your deathbed you can you can mitigate a hundred percent of inheritance tax as long as you give yourself plenty of time to do it yeah don't wait until you're in your 60s in your 70s to do this it might may well be, be too late by then okay you need to get your ducks in a row get your trust structures set up there's a one or two other ways of doing it as well um but it's mainly trust structures we'll get that set up and we can start mitigating inheritance tax for you okay uh, and that can be quite painful especially if you're high net worth that's passing stuff on to, to just a couple of kids so yeah get in touch we can definitely help you mitigate that um that's something that you pay to hmrc if you don't if you know if you like hmrc more than you like your children okay it's totally unnecessary right so just get in touch and i think that's it you know we all have to pay tax that's a given but there's no need to leave a tip and we certainly don't want hmrc sending us christmas cards so get in touch if you have any kind of concerns you're not worried about, you're worried about with regard to uh, your income tax, your capital gains tax, um, and uh, your uh, uh, inheritance tax, yeah, please get in touch. And that's pretty much it from me. And uh, let's take some questions. Perfect. Thank you, Malcolm. That was uh, really interesting. So we, we have some um, 
some questions that people have asked. So I'm just going to get cracking and, and fire them over to you if that's okay. So the okay. first question I'm going to ask is, do I have to pay tax when I bring my car to Greece? Okay. So it depends on how old, how old the car is. So if your car is um, more than six months old, which I would have thought it would be, um, then there's there's no duty to pay. But if it's less than six months old, as you can, I'm sure you can understand, they they want to kind of protect their um their uh, their car industry, their car dealerships, and so on. So they want you um, shipping a car in if it's less than uh, six months old. So and um, so if it is less than six months old, there will be duty to pay. So just make sure whatever it is, whether it's a caravan, uh, whether it's a car, whatever it is, uh, a truck, whatever, just make sure it's a motorbike, make sure it's more than six months old and there's no duty to pay. Nice, makes complete sense. So, um, yeah, so obviously if I moved to, to Greece um, and I lived there for a while, at what point um, do I become like a tax uh, resident? Okay. So that's that's um been cleared up in the last few years because that all got a little bit of smoke and mirrors so it's uh it's 183 days as soon as you've done 183 days in greece they will consider you a greek tax resident nice odd number 183 but um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So another question has come in. So can I set up a company in Greece and put my UK properties in it to mitigate the real estate and wealth tax? Okay, so there is, I think that's more for uh, for, for France. So there is no real estate wealth tax in in, uh, in Greece. Okay. So yeah, if you, if you want to try and put, um, if you've got lots of properties and you're trying to um, mitigate the um, rental tax in, in, in Greece, I think that's probably what you're referring to there, is, um, yeah, they will, they, will, they will spot that, okay? They will, the, 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 the idea of putting like 10 properties inside a, inside a company and then trying to mitigate your, um, your rental income tax, as we went through a little bit earlier, um, they, will, um, they will not look on that kindly. So that's not something you'll be able to do, no yeah nice one um so yeah so we've got a question from elizabeth um so she said um i'm in the us my husband is a greek american does your firm have offices here in the us uh we don't have an office in the us as far as i'm aware but we do have um a us specialist uh certain mr alex ingram so yeah that's certainly someone you need to speak to so um with regard to um cross-border tax and all these sorts of things yes we have a u.s specialist and yes we are licensed in the u.s now so that would be um one of my colleagues who would deal with that so get in touch with me and i can pass you his details no problem at all nice but the u.s is very very specialist area and you, you need to be very careful and you need to be fully qualified for that kind of stuff um i haven't i've got i've got qualifications for all sorts of different countries in the eu um i never did my us ones because the exams are like i think there's three exams and they're all seven hours long each and i didn't fancy fine over there <laughs> learning all that stuff but alex has done all that stuff he's very very good so i can pass you his details no problem nice so we've got a question from deborah and i'm pretty sure you covered it in the presentation but she's asked does uh income include pensions uh, yes, it it will do. Yeah, so income includes pensions. But if you've got um, if you've got uh, if your income is only a pension, yeah. Let's say you've got you can take a pension and take an income from a job at the same time. Okay, that's perfectly okay. But your pension will be will come under the uh, seven percent flat tax. Okay, your income will come under the income tax that I showed you earlier. Those three areas. Okay. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with working at the same time as drawing down on a pension. They're just going to be taxed separately. Yeah. Nice. Okay, that makes complete sense. So I've um, I've got another question here. So should I take my twenty five percent tax free lump sum from my UK pension before I move to Greece? There's no necessity to do that for Greece. For there's several European countries where which don't recognize the tax-free status of the 25 percent yeah so what's often referred to in the uk is the pcls the pension commencement lump sum and it's tax-free in the uk it is also tax-free in uh in 
in, in Greece. Okay, the lump sum is tax free in Greece. So you take your 25% tax free lump sum and the remaining 75% you can take as an income taxed at 7% flat. Yeah, however, there are other countries in, in Europe which don't recognize that 25% as tax free. So thankfully, the Greeks do recognize it. Yeah, and they do. So that's you, you, there's no incentive then to take it out before you go to Greece. No, you might want to do it, but there's no there's no financial incentive to do so. Nice. That up. So, um, in regards to corporate tax uh, income tax, so what is uh, corporate income tax rate in Greece? All oh, right. Okay, that's just changed recently. So it used to be nineteen percent, and on the first of April this year, it changed to twenty five percent. So watch this space. We don't know what boy's going to be next year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll lucky we have you here to tell us, and and hopefully we'll be on a webinar next year, giving an update as yeah, well. Yeah, so some of these numbers will change. Yeah, they do change from year to year. So yeah, I'll, as soon as they do, I'll update it. There's no worry about that. Nice. So we've got a question from David saying, "What tax rate applies to unearned income, like interest on savings and dividends?" Okay, so that will be the page that I referred to earlier. Um, you know, let me try and move back a little bit other taxes so there's a withholding tax on dividends at five percent um withholding tax on interest at 15 percent i think that's what you're referring to so um if there's anything more you need to know about that get in touch but those those are the uh, and of course on capital gains as well so um but it just depends on your circumstances if it's a little bit more complicated than what your your question implies then um yeah get in touch yeah, and that we'll, we'll discuss exactly what kind of tax you can be you'll be facing with your particular circumstances. Nice. <clears throat> so David's uh, asked a question about the um, interest rate for retirees. So seven percent rate for retirees is all income taxed at that rate, or only pension income? Only pension income. Yeah. Yeah. Income from any kind of earnings other than rental. Yeah, income from earnings will be taxed just as I pointed out earlier. Okay, so let's flick back. So you'll be looking at um, those income tax bandings for normal income. Okay, so anything that is then rental is at these bandings. Yeah, and anything that's a pension will be at 7% flat for 15 years. Nice, thank you for okay. that up. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, so we've had another question come in saying, um, someone's just clarifying on the uh, social security. So she's asked, did you say the 7% on social security was applied for seven years or 15 years? 15 years. Nice. Cool. So um, we've had another question from Elizabeth. Is there a benefit to being a dual citizen with Greek citizenship? Uh, dual with UK, I'm assuming you're saying, yeah. So, um, um, yes, there is, um, because of Brexit. Okay. If you're going to be moving to, to Greece and you have dual citizenship, the last thing you want to be doing is, uh, registering yourself in Greece as a Brit. Yeah. Take that, that, that British passport and flush it down the toilet yeah. um the, it's going to be nothing but headaches i know people who've, who, who've gone to greece registered as a with their british passports and regretted it since brexit because they have to fill in a whole lot of uh, paperwork visas all this kind of stuff so uh, big big advantage massive yeah absolutely if you've got greek citizenship um use it and abuse it absolutely nice yeah, yeah. i wish i had a uh... A European passport at this time and age. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. So me I know too. you mentioned that your colleague was it Alex um, Ingram um, is a U yes. US specialist, but I've just yeah. had a question here coming from Alexander, and he's asked, yeah. "I have a UK uh, a US pension built up that can or will be paid out in a lump sum. How will this be taxed in Greece?" Yeah, that will be at seven percent. If you're tax resident in Greece at the time, when you take out the lump sum, 
that will be taxed at seven percent yeah okay so elizabeth would just come back about the question that we just touched on before so i know we were saying uh, a greek passport with a uk but it's actually um a greek passport with a us so a dual citizen with the us oh, right. okay. similar yeah similar but the, the only issue is again you need to speak to alex but the, of, you know I, I know a little bit about this myself so um the issue that you have with us passports so anyone who's a us passport holder is that um, the US basically tax you on your passport. They don't care where you are. Yeah. And they rely on um, the, uh, they don't rely on the individual to report anymore. They have a little thing called FATCA. And what that is, is uh, um, making the, um, the companies, the financial institutions, the banks um, responsible for reporting the fact that they've got um, Americans on their books. Yeah, so and it's the and it's the uh, company owners and um, board members who go to prison or have get fined if they don't announce uh, or, or share information about their their U.S. Um, citizens on their books. Yeah, I'll give, and, and so what's happened is a lot of banks and and financial institutions have dropped Americans completely. Um, Bank of America, for example, don't take Americans outside of America. You know that kind of stuff so that that happens quite a lot so i would definitely use your your, your greek um uh, uh, uh nationality when you're in greece but that doesn't mean you're not going to be paying us tax you you will be yeah so um again it's a matter of um understanding the the dta so it depends what kind of taxes are covered in the dta between the two countries yeah it takes a little bit of work that one yeah nice Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for that, Malcolm. That was uh, really insightful. So, um, yeah, well, that's all we kind of have time for today. So uh, thank you, Malcolm, and for all your insightful tips and advice. Um, we strongly recommend you get in touch with Chase B. Canning directly to discuss your requirements in detail. Um, obviously, uh, Malcolm's details are on the screen. So, um, yeah, um, please take note of them or we will um, speak to you after this webinar with all the details. Um, so we'll be in touch shortly um, with the specific details you need. So uh, yeah, again, thank you, Malcolm, for sharing your knowledge with us today. And thank you for all of our listeners for joining us. Uh, before we finish, I'd like to invite you to leave us um, a review on Trustpilot um, if you found this um, webinar helpful but um if not thank you very much uh, thanks again and happy um property hunting so thank you again malcolm thank you nice one see you guys